Remember pop-ups? If I know anything about my audience demographics, most of you probably should. But for those who don't, it was a huge part of how we navigated the webs, specifically how we navigated around all the ads spamming us constantly on websites. But there were nice things about pop-ups. The idea of having a portion of your website broken out so the user can manage it and put it different places, or even programmatically moving the pop out. There's a lot of ideas here that are good. And we've re-implemented a ton of them through crazy hacks like popover JS. They are even now built in layers in the browser to make these things better, but we haven't really captured the magic of a separate window until now, because Google is bringing them back with companion windows. This is a very exciting proposal that I'm hopeful is going to see the light of day in the near future. I want to break it down with y'all, but first we need to hear quickly from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is me because I couldn't get a sponsor in time. If you're interested in sponsoring moments like this and getting your message out to thousands upon thousands of talented developers that are not just like learning or getting started, these are devs who are working jobs that they've been in for years, if not decades, that have tons of experience and most importantly, tons of buying power at their jobs. If you want to get your product, your company, your work, your business, whatever, in front of the most talented devs in the industry, there's no better way to do it than to hit me up, youtube at t3.gg. Let's dig in, because I am very excited about what's going on here. Companion windows. A window may have companion windows, which are similar to pop-ups, but they render within a tab or other top-level window, and they're closed if closed or navigated to a different origin. So if you leave the website that opened it, this will close as well. Companion windows could be docked to the edge of the window, or they can be a mole on the bottom of the content area. They can float a above and around content, and they can attach to elements in the document. Very exciting. Very exciting. A companion window's history does not participate in the main browsing history, so clicking the back button won't navigate with the companion window. Very good. Very exciting. A companion window can't have companion windows. No, I can't put a tooltip in my tooltip. What about my tooltips tooltips? Now, this, that makes sense. There may be multiple companion windows open by the main page at a given time, though. Very interesting. When a navigation within the origin occurs, the companion window remains. So if I click like one month old here and I'm still on GitHub, the companion window can stay. If the document no longer makes it attached. So if it was attached some way to the document, then it will change to another presentation style. Like it can float or be docked. The new page can manipulate it as can the user. So the user can make changes to it and the JavaScript can as well. Let's see why they're doing this. Cause I, I can speculate all day, but I'm curious what they have to say. I hadn't thought about this as like a way to bring SPA stuff to multi-page apps. That's actually a really good point. Somebody in chat actually made a really good point too. It's like YouTube videos where I stick to the bottom right. Yeah, very, very much something this would help make way easier to build. Like your own pop out, like hover UI for a player went from impossible to somewhat trivial with this. Very exciting. Navigation from page to page is a key part of sites and applications on the web, a fact which remains true even as single page apps increase in number. Nonetheless, different pages don't always constitute totally separate experiences. The user might be engaging with a live media stream, support session, or other adjacent experiences on the site as they use it. Yeah, like you might be watching me live on Wednesday afternoon between 1 p.m. and 8 p.m., which is when I film all my videos, by the way, if you haven't, twitch.tv or on YouTube if you're subbed to the little bell. You can watch me recording these live, give feedback, and help as we figure out the videos. It's really fun, not for everyone, but yeah. Ideally, in the future, the little pop-out would allow you to navigate Twitch or other things without having to write a bunch of custom code for it. Pop-up windows are the classic solution for breaking out of these sorts of experiences, but they have well-known drawbacks. That's putting it lightly. <laughs> they were open to abuse and user confusion, necessitating the advent of pop-up blockers in modern browsers. They detach fully from the origin tab and window, depending on the browser, and they lose their clear association with the window where they came. In fact, the ability to confusingly conceal pop-ups led to pop-unders in similar hostile patterns. Oh God, pop-unders, where it like does a pop-up under the page that you're on, so you don't even know it's open in the background. Ugh. I, the 100% bike shed, that's actually hilarious. I've never seen that before. What? BS is the, the language? Bike shed, that's actually really funny. You've never seen that before. This calls for a solution which allows the necessary script and DOM to span pages within a site, keep the activity like a media playback going as seamlessly as possible, fluidly changing the window to suit the context. So like if you click the dark mode or light mode, the little preview or thing you have in the corner should change accordingly or move to a different place to make room in the window. 
should build on existing user and developer expectations about security and privacy, making it clear how these contexts relate to one another. It should behave consistently with modern network and storage partitioning. It should not raise barriers to universal access, so it should handle accessibility and localization, important details. It should be lightweight enough to easily be adopted before support in browsers is widespread. That's actually a good call out too. Like if you can't re-implement this in React right now, temporarily as like a polyfill type thing, not good. I like they call that out. They're not just pretending they can make the standard and then everyone will implement it. They're saying like, we need this to be simple enough that you can DIY it in the interim. I like they call out non-goals. More projects need to do this where they say like, this is what we won't do. The solution should not displace existing window tooling like pop-ups and picture in picture and frames or navigation APIs like service workers, preloading and view transitions, or even media APIs like media session and media source. It should complement these. It shouldn't replace them. It shouldn't obsolete single page apps either. You're not gonna obsolete SPAs. That, that's never going to happen. But I appreciate you for cl clearly stating that you won't because I know certain proposals in the past weren't so clear about that. It will remain useful for some sites to be structured as a single page, just not as necessary for some use cases. The solution need not support every imaginable use of long lived context or state. It's enough to solve some use cases well and leave others for other APIs like workers and storage. Fair. They give some fun examples like live news videos that should be shown as you navigate the site and customer support chat. I feel like half of what Chrome builds is to make life easier for intercom. <laughs> and this lines up with that very well. And here's the breakdown of companion windows. Each top level traversable has a collection of companion windows, which are similar to auxiliary pop-up windows in that they are not confined by the lifetime of a single document, but they're similar to frames in that they form part of the user's experience browsing a single suite within or immediately adjacent to the content area. Interesting way of framing it, but the, the important detail is that the pop-up leaves the page session you're in when you have traditional pop-ups. Like you open a pop-up, you can close the tab and the pop-up's still open. With companion windows, they're built into the window and they're attached to the browser's origin. So as you navigate from page to page, it will stay there, unlike an iframe, which you would lose. But if you close the page or you go to a different origin entirely, like you click a link on GitHub that brings you to Vercel or something, that will kill it. And that's an interesting compromise I actually quite like. Companion window can be presented in several different ways, controlled by the top level document. If left unstyled, the user agent ensures it is presented in a suitable way. So as I mentioned before, they can be docked, they can be floating, they can be anchored, and they can even be inline within the document, which is very interesting. Because if it's inlined and then you go to a different page, it can pop out. That's actually super cool because you could inline. So like for the Twitch example, when you're navigating Twitch, you could inline a companion window as the player. And then when you navigate, it'll automatically pop it out when you're going across the site. That's actually really, really cool. CSS oriented presentation styles. Instead of selecting a presentation style via JavaScript, this could be done with CSS. Fun, more weird CSS flags. Inline comma docked bottom. That's such a weird syntax. I feel like CSS needs to pick how they want to do things and not change it for every single fucking feature. But you can also just do it via JavaScript. You can give it position anchored true and then call reposition when you run different logic, like when you're navigating. That I actually kind of like. I like this call out example because it's very similar to what I was saying before. Say there's an app called National News that embeds their player in a companion window, which is initially inline or anchored, but it may become floating or docked as Irene scrolls. When Irene clicks to the article, the player window continues to run. If the article page styles it appropriately, it may become embedded in that page. Very interesting. So like if you go back to the original page, it can re-embed if it is correctly set in the browser. It's smart enough to do that as you navigate around. Even with like SPA, sometimes when you go backwards and forwards, it can kill the state. Like I've seen that with like an intercom or support chat where I hit back to go to something and I lose the chat. Oh, this is going to be really good for a lot of those use cases. Yeah, finding good automatic behaviors as you navigate is going to be a huge challenge. Respect to them for trying to figure it out. They also break down some considered alternatives, which are things that they were thinking about and like that you could use instead. What's document picture in picture? Is this a real proposal? Chrome doesn't have it, but Edge does. That, that's enough for me to be skeptical. So let's say you do arbitrary HTML content. It's like the picture in picture API for video. Interesting. What do they call out about it here? Document picture in picture is not a suitable substitute here because it's strongly linked with the document that created it and it closes when that document navigates. Huge deal. When you navigate to a different document, you lose it. That makes this unusable. It renders outside the content area and in fact, outside the browser window as a floating borderless window. 
sometimes desirable because it lets you consume media when you change out entirely. So like if I have a video playing on YouTube and I leave and go to check my email app, I can still have the player floating. Not a use case I want very often, but I could see why this would be useful sometimes. But I, I do hate that about picture in picture in most implementations. Also, it requires platform support for such windows, which is not universal, especially on something like iOS. Also, a lot of Linux distros. On the other hand, rendering additional contents inside the same content area is likely supportable on a broader range of platforms. Absolutely is. That I like the little I know about browsers and like platform standards. Yeah, good stuff. I am really excited about this proposal. This is a very early proposal, but I see a ton of potential here, and I'm curious how you guys feel as well. Are you excited about Companion Windows, or are you tired of anything that looks like pop-ups? Let me know in the comments, and until next time, peace nerds.